All right, members, welcome back. Now, today's gonna be all about creating a lookalike audience and custom audiences. What the difference is between the two and how do we actually make sure that we're segmenting properly with the correct offer to the correct person at the correct time. This is where a lot of business owners get it wrong. This is why people will, will, will you'll hear it over and over again about how Facebook is so difficult and advertising is a waste of money and all this stuff. It's because people aren't understanding how to actually segment their viewers and what it is that they need to send to each viewer based on what their behavior has indicated. So first thing is that we wanna make sure is go through that pixel video, make sure that every single one of your pixels are set up correctly. Then, now we can start to create those, those, uh, those lookalike audiences and custom audiences. So if you have a list right now of email subscribers that you wanna turn and start to market to on Facebook, this is a great time for us to do this. If you have already videos that have been put on your Facebook page, that you want to then retarget those viewers, this is gonna be helpful for you. Again, if you have a site, like a website, that you wanna go ahead and track, say, people who had visited this page but didn't visit this page, this is gonna be able to help you set up, that up too. So first things first, let's go ahead and we're on our ads manager dashboard. Let's get to the drop down menu and let's go to audiences. If you don't find audiences off to the left, then what you could do is you can go to your assets section and click on audiences. It's gonna take you to where we can create these audiences. And so first thing we wanna do is click on create audience. Now, you can't have a lookalike audience until you have a custom audience, okay? First thing is, is we, have, we have to have some base. We have to have a custom audience. So this could be your lead list. It could be people who watch specific videos, engaged with your page, uh, visited your website or specific pages within your website. So first thing we gotta do is start off with a custom audience. And so you have a few different choices. We have a customer file, which is what, like I mentioned, if you're importing leads from your CRM. So if you've got you know 5,000 email le uh, leads on, inside of Aweber or GetResponse, export those leads in a CSV file and then click customer profile or customer file here. And you're just going to choose a file or copy and paste data. Literally, this is what you're doing. You're gonna drag your CSV file or you're gonna upload it here. And the CSV file then is going to give you an opportunity to match the name with the name, with the last name, with the last name, whatever criteria you wanna match. So typically what we wanna do when you're uploading a file from your email list is you wanna make sure you have as much data as possible. So first name, last name, phone number if they've got it, um, email address, what country are they in, what zip code. You wanna give Facebook as much data as you can about the information that you have. And when you, when you uh, export that from your lead list, from your AWeb or your CRM, it's gonna automatically give you this information and if you're asking for it inside of your form, so if you have a lead page that asks for the phone number, you're gonna be able to input their phone number. Now, the basic things that you need that we've seen work really well, the very basic is gonna be their first name, their last name, and their email address. If you can make sure that you're telling Facebook that, hey, look, the amount of people that I'm giving you on my email list, I want to match specific criteria to what they opt in with on Facebook, mean or what they log in with on Facebook, meaning that you wanna match those 5,000 people you wanna say, okay, if they've got this first name with this last name and this email address, then we want to create a retargeting audience filled with those people. So if you have an email list of 5,000, you'll probably end up getting anywhere between 2,000 and 4,500 that are gonna actually be avail uh, available for you to remarket to on Facebook. You're never gonna get 100% of your list to actually be available and uh, accessible through a retargeting ad on Facebook. The reason why, is because people are using fake email addresses and people have multiple email addresses. So if I use an email address and I give you that email address to opt in for a giveaway and I use a different email address to log into Facebook, I'm gonna be excluded from that retargeting audience. Okay, this is why we wanna make sure that we have our pixels set up because then it doesn't matter if you have my email address, it's based off of my behavior. Okay, that's why pixels are so huge. But this does work. So you wanna take and export those leads, put them into here, and then it's gonna happen automatically. You're just gonna go through this very easy walkthrough process and you're gonna press submit. And then within two hours, sometimes an entire day, depending on how big your list is, you're gonna be able to have that custom audience ready. So the next thing that we wanna do is if you're not doing a customer file, you do website traffic. So this is where we were talking about before. If I have a, uh, a, a lead funnel and I'm also selling something on the back end, then what if I, I would want to, right? I'd wanna make sure that I knew which people had opted in versus which people had just, had just opted in versus which people had purchased. Because I wanna be able to send maybe an upsell sequence or a, a, a complimentary offer to people who purchased, or maybe I just wanna say thank you. Those ads are really cool when you just have a thank you ad around to people and say, hey, thanks for becoming a part of the academy. Uh, you know, Looking forward to seeing your success. 
Those kinds of ads are huge. They're huge. No one's doing that right now. Okay, so that's just another golden nugget for you to be able to use in your future marketing. Now, what we want to do is you can do anybody who visited your website. You can do anyone who visited specific pages in your website. You can do people who visited specific pages but not others, and then people who haven't visited in a certain amount of time. What we want to do in this example is we're going to say people who visited specific web pages but not others. So right here, we know that we want to keep the URL contains and contains, meaning that when you look here, we have a few different let me go ahead and bring this one up. Let me bring this one up. And let me bring this one up. And let me bring, I thought I brought this one up. Okay, come on. So here we go. Okay, so what we have here is, all right, so what we have here is if you look at the URL, this URL has squeeze page in it, right? This URL has sales page in it. This URL has order confirmation in it. So what we want to do is we want to say, let's say that we want to retarget people with this direct offer to the academy, right? We want to send them straight to a sales page or a sales video because we know they've opted in for the swipe file. We know that they're interested in building their business and we know that the academy is going to help them solve that problem. So what we would want to do is we would take the keywords, right? The keywords inside this URL, because as you can tell with Facebook, it says, what does the URL contain? So if we were to actually use this entire link here, the thing that would cause a hiccup would be because it has, see how it says ClickFunnels, BrandonAndSarah.ClickFunnels? Brandon Guess what looks here? BrandonAndSarah.ClickFunnels? Guess what it says here? BrandonAndSarah.ClickFunnels? So as you can see, that's not anything different. There's nothing different between those. And so what we wanna do is we wanna tell Facebook which actual, uh, which page we want them to see. And we can't use the entire URL we got to use what each URL contains. So this is why when you have this, you want to say, okay, well, I'm going to go with people who had visited the sales page. So copy, and now I'm going to come to Facebook. I'm going to say, okay, URL keywords. And then again, this one right here is going to be confirmation, order confirmation. Copy that, come back here, have that. And now what we have is in the last, let's say, typically you don't want to go over 90 days. Let's keep it to 60 days, include web, web, past web traffic. And now this name would be uh, leads, but did not buy academy and then 197. Okay. So this lets me know that this is my audience name. These are people, these are leads. I should say actually with the, so swipe file leads. Swipe file leads did not buy. Okay, now what we have is telling Facebook that we want people that have visited this URL page but did not get to this page and we're gonna name it here and all of it is within the last 60 days. So I'm gonna go to create audience and now it says, it, okay, this is, I'm glad I did this for you because it says audience is too small. You wanna give this a couple hours, okay? Do not worry about it if it says that it's too small. Typically, it's you, you've got to be able to have, um, uh, it, it just takes a couple hours, sometimes even a, even a day or two, but really, it's all about just patience right here. Don't worry about it if it says audience too small, because guess what you get to do? We can now create a lookalike audience based off these people. So let me get back into the create audience. Let me go back to custom audience, and let me just make sure that we go through the engagement on Facebook. So we covered the customer file, how to import leads from your email list. We've covered the website traffic, how to take the URL from specific pages and import or and, and give Facebook that data to say, this is the people that we want to create an audience for. App activity, not going to go into because not a lot of people are you know into apps right now, at least not in the academy, so it would be a waste of time. And then we have the engagement on Facebook. So here's where we want to let people know that, look, have you, have you included yourself or have you been a part of a video? We like to go at least people who have watched 25% of your video. Click on that. Then this little hidden gem right here where it says choose videos, a lot of people are gonna to get to this point, they're gonna go, what the hell do I do? How do I make this happen? Just click the choose videos, and you wanna make sure that you're choosing the account that you want to run the videos from. A lot of you are only gonna have one account. We're gonna choose from our business page. And now from here, let's say that we have uh, a couple of these, right? So something like this, something like this, something like this. I'm just doing this as an example. And we go to confirm. So now we know that anybody who's watched 25% of these videos in the last 60 days, and I'll te you know, test audience, okay? And now we are telling Facebook, anybody who watched any one of those four videos in the last 25 or 25% 25 of those videos in the last 60 days, we wanna create an audience specifically for those people. So then we would say create audience 
and it could take up to 30 minutes. And again, it's gonna ask you for uh, expanding. Don't even do worry about any of this yet. Don't worry about any of this yet. Just go to done. And now you're gonna see it's populating. This is gonna take about the same amount of time as this. Don't worry about the audience too small. Like I said, it's gonna take a couple of hours. Populating, this should be done in a few hours as well. Now, what we could do is we could start to create our lookalike audiences, okay? So from the lookalike audiences, as I mentioned before, you've gotta have a custom audience created for them to build a lookalike audience off of. So think of it as a custom audience is what you have initially, and then they create people, they give you an audience of people who fit the top 1% of those people that you created in your custom audience. So from there we have, let's say lookalike. It's gonna be very simple to do. Look how simple this is. It's the source, we wanna choose the page. So we're gonna choose the page that we have, which is our Northwoods Consulting, okay? And then we have uh, United States, Canada, and United Kingdom, okay? And now we have 2.7 million. Now I can't go any, I can't go any lower than that. I can go higher, and I could say, okay, well, based off the top 2%, uh, the top 3%, the top 4% of those countries, we wanna do the top 1%. Keep it to the top 1%, and now what we do is we're gonna get 2.7 million people on average that are gonna be just like, or at least similar enough based on Facebook's algorithm that are gonna match the criteria of the people that we created the custom audience for. Okay, how cool is that? So from here, then we just go to create audience, and as you can see, not ready, updating audience. These right here are gonna take a couple hours. Okay, but just imagine by tomorrow, I'll be able to run an ad now. I'll be able to create an ad specifically for people who were leads but did not buy. I'll be able to create a, uh, a, a, be able to offer the lead magnet to the people who watched my videos. And then I'll be able to send an offer and a lead, or I'm sorry, the lead magnet to the people who matched those buyers. Okay, or matched that test audience. Okay, so depending on what it is that you're looking to do, look at how simple it could be to literally break down this one large group getting specific people. So if you've got a group of a market of 100,000 people that you're looking to market to, you generate 500 leads. Those 500 leads could be turned into millions of more lookalike people that are gonna be interested in what you have to offer just based on their behavior that's being tracked by Facebook. So this is an incredible way for you to be able to, again, make sure that your pixels, uh, your custom audiences are set up correctly for the future retargeting campaigns. You wanna think about this in advance. So as you create your marketing funnels, you wanna be able to think, okay, well, if these people take this action, but they don't take this action, what can I offer them as the next step? Well, if they purchase, what can I offer them as an upsell? If they don't opt in to our initial giveaway, then what can I offer them that complements that, that's kinda of like uh, you know, uh, in alignment with that, right? But it's not the exact same topic. What can I offer those people? When you have that concept, when you have that vision behind your marketing funnels and that, that whole promoting process, your entire life becomes so much easier. Everything becomes easier. And now you might be looking at this and saying, well, damn, Brennan, that must take a really high ad budget. And it really doesn't. If you have a few, like say 10 bucks, if you have 10 to 20 bucks a day, 10 to 20 bucks a day, you can get a lot of this done for you, right? You can get a lot of this done and going for you, which is gonna help you drive more sales, which is gonna in turn allow you to then put more money into advertising and scale and all that good stuff. We gotta think about this. It's not costing you anything. It shouldn't be. It should be an investment that leads to a positive ROI. So at the end of the month, if you invested, say, $300 in the advertising, which is $10 a day, what would happen if you generated $305 in profits? Wouldn't you feel like that was a win? In your first month, we really want to make sure that you're at least breaking even, right? You want to make sure that you're at least breaking even. So make sure that you're testing your budgets. Understand, I don't want you to go and exert yourself to beyond what you can afford, but I do want you to know that without an advertising budget, without you being able to segment properly, every single one of the ad campaigns that you do create, they're not gonna get you the yield that you want. So make sure that you've gone through this training, you've got your, inst your pixels installed, you've got your custom audiences created, you've got your advertising running, you've got your retargeting campaigns already architected and thought out, and then from now on, you're gonna be able to come in here at will, create new audiences, create new lookalike audiences, and then retarget them with future campaigns. So hopefully um, this wasn't too techy for you, right? Uh, make sure that you've gotta watch it again, watch it again. I know it seems like it's a lot to really put into action, but when you start to do this one day at a time, one step at a time, it's gonna become a lot easier for you day after day. All right, so make sure you're up to this point, make sure you have your custom audiences created and your lookalike audience created, and I'll see you on the next video.